Well, it's the day before I'm going to be embarking on a 600 mile journey down to the south of England. And it's the middle of the day on Friday and it's minus six degrees. Overnight, the temperature dropped to minus 10. And the day before we had snow, which gradually became wetter and wetter and it's slightly melted. So I cleared my car uh, yesterday before it refroze, but we've now got the challenge of how do we get into the car? So let's uh, have a look at the car and see what kind of challenges we have to face uh, before we're ready to set off tomorrow. So here we've got the boot. This was a struggle to open, but it works now, which is fine. That's good. So I've got everything needed to get in there. Um, what I find is that the ice will uh, melt down here and then it will refreeze right on this gap here. Uh, removing this uh, is also a bit of a challenge. Yes, a bit of a struggle, but it does remove. That's good. The big challenge is getting in here. As you can see, these handles, these struggle a little bit with unfolding, but uh, that's fine. Uh, one other thing I noticed was uh, it sounded like there was a fan click, 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 clicking. It was almost as though there was ice which was uh, fouling it. Here you go, listen to that. Anyone know what that is? I've never heard that before. That does sound like ice uh, getting in the way of a fan. So people that watched my video in December 2021 will, you can see how I changed my tires from summer to winters. These are the Pirelli S3 uh, winter tires. Um, I've driven them uh, uh, this winter period on white roads and uh, they are absolutely fantastic. They give you a huge amount of confidence. Okay, let's see how my car's doing. Well, it's defrosting nicely, but we still have the headlights to do. Even though this has been defrosting a while, this handle is still locked shut. So we will uh, just simply pop the door open like this. Excellent, so now we can uh, get in. That's such a useful ha uh, feature to have on a Tesla. So now we'll uh, get this in because I can't open the, uh, the rear door. If I struggle to open the driver's door, Right, nice and easy. Oh, well, the cable is sort of defrosted. It's uh, been pulling seven kilowatts, uh, pre-warming the car. So it pulls seven kilowatts to charge up the battery, but it also pulls seven kilowatts to pre-warm the car. So it's definitely using the most of shore power. But now it is just after 4.30, so it's the end of the cheap electricity period. Okay, let's get out of here. So no problem with winter tires getting up here. So, so that's all fairly straightforward. This is probably the hardest place for uh, the, the winter, the whitest roads, and it has no trouble at all uh, getting out of here. That scraping sound you can hear on the brakes is a bit of rust, so just apply the brakes and that should remove the scraping sound. Let's just test the windscreen wipers. Okay, they're clear, that's good. As long as they're not frozen, that's the most important thing. So what have we got? We are predicting 45% uh, charge at Perth Supercharger. The journey down to Perth was trouble-free with no snow or ice on the roads. This is a testament to the great work that the Gritters on Transport Scotland Network have done 
and overall the temperatures after leaving my house rose up to about freezing point by the time we got to Aberdeen and the temperatures all the way down the A90 and onwards to Perth were about plus one rising up to plus two degrees by the time we got to Broxton roundabout. The efficiency of the journey was about 385 watt hours per mile for this initial uh, leg of the journey. And we ended up with a state of charge of 37% by the time we got to Broxton roundabout. Well, here we are coming up to the Perth Broxton roundabout. So we'll see what the local roads are like. Um, there doesn't seem to be too much snow. I, did, I do know they had a lot of uh, snow around uh, Glasgow, Stirling, the central belt. Um, some of the snow came this way, but uh, not too much by the looks of things. The roads are very black. Um, the question is, is the park and ride going to be uh, uh, clear of ice and snow? That's, that's the interesting one. Okay, so far so good. So let's just turn left. Park and ride should be okay because they've got uh, scheduled buses coming in. But of course, it looks like the parking spaces themselves are uh, another matter. Let's see, turn right here. Ah, here we are. It's at the top of a slope. Right, I've got plenty of choice, just the way I like it. Right. right. And it's charging, excellent bit of uh, mist coming off the uh, bonnet. I find they always, uh, there's always a bit of condensation, a steam coming out of here uh, when the, the car's charging up. Well, since I've got my snow shovel, why not uh, clear a bit more of a space for one of the other uh, Tesla drivers that might turn up. Now, something which has occurred to me is that we've got this fenced off area here in the car park. Uh, when I was here last time in uh, April, uh, this was uh, just uh, ordinary parking. I'm just speculating, is this going to be another uh, row of uh, supercharger stalls? I wonder. Or is it going to be a row of uh, other stalls for other charging companies? Very interesting. This is an ideal location for charging. Uh, we've got the Charge Place Scotland uh, charges just down there, um, and uh, it would uh, make sense that the uh, that this Perth interchange uh, would be uh, a, a charging hub. It's right at the crossroads between two major uh, trunk routes. So I've uh, got uh, Abington Supercharger dialed in, and I want to charge up uh, with a predicted range of. 22% remaining at Abington. So if we go to service, I want to have a look at tyres. We go there and we go to tyres. We can see that winter tyres are selected. So you've got the choice of uh, winter or all season and summer tyres. So it knows we've got winter tyres and it knows, it should know that the winter tyres have uh, a much uh, poorer performance when it comes to uh, efficiency um, and yet it's still underestimate it's still overestimating how much uh, charge we're going to have at each uh, destination okay so we've got our predicted 22% uh, charge so let's get out of here um, literally I was in there for about 10 minutes to just charge up normally I drive all the way to Abington if it's uh, a milder uh, drive. The journey to Abington was similarly uneventful. We had a little bit of snow and ice on the second lane of the A9 
driving to uh, Dunblane, especially in the western part. But after we got onto the M9 and the M80, the roads were completely clear all the way to Abington. Indeed, all the snow that was reported the day before seems to have completely cleared from the verges in the central belt around the M73 and the M74 in the lower part near Hamilton. We got to Abington superchargers and there didn't seem to be any snow of uh, significant quantity at that uh, location either. So here we are at uh, Abington Services heading for the supercharger and as hoped we've got free run of everything. Right, excellent. So it looks like we will be charging up. So one question to ask is, why bother doing this uh, 600 mile challenge uh, video all over again? And I think the best answer to that question is, um, what's changed? Well, here I am in uh, Abington uh, Services and uh, we have got a bank of 12 new chargers which are being installed. They're not yet in commission. Uh, this is a brand called Apple Green, which I've never heard of before. Um, I've heard of GridServe and I'm not too sure how fast these chargers are going to be. Hopefully they're going to be super fast chargers, 350 kilowatts. That would be really nice if they are. If they're just rapid chargers, I don't think that's going to be particularly uh, adequate. But the question is, what's changed um, in general for my journey south to uh, West Sussex? Now, in terms of superchargers, almost nothing. Um, in Scotland, the only thing that's happened is an extension of the Edinburgh uh, supercharger uh, stalls. We've got uh, 16 stalls instead of eight stalls, but I never use those. On my particular route, the only additional superchargers that we've got are at Heathrow Airport, and there's uh, some new ones coming along in uh, Guildford and in Dorking uh, very soon. We've got some superchargers in Oxford, but that's quite a long way off the route. We've got superchargers in Manchester, but again, that's a long way off the route. On the actual route, almost nothing. But in terms of other brands, here's some good news. Um, in Hamilton, which I've just driven past, uh, we have got uh, a brand called Fastned, and they will offer 350 kilowatt chargers, but we can't use 350 kilowatts on a Tesla. You need an 800 volt uh, uh, DC architecture for that. Teslas only have 400 volts at the moment. Um, northbound at uh, Burton and Kendall, we've got grid surf uh, uh, chargers at, again, 350 kilowatts. Now, they should be charging up at 175 kilowatts on a 400 volt architecture. So there's some good news. Um, the Abington services over here, the Abington superchargers, they quickly fill up and they're one of the slower ones. These are 120 kilowatts, which I'm not too uh, impressed with. And the speed drops in half when you actually uh, have someone parking up next to you. But today, so far, no problems. Okay, let's uh, head on to uh, T-Bay services. So uh, we have got a 20% uh, predicted state of charge for T-Bay services. When it came to Abington, it was 22% uh, predicted state of charge when we were at Perth and it ended up being 17%. So there's no point charging up any more uh, than necessary because if you charge up more than necessary, um, you end up with slower charging speeds. Okay, so I had a look at Apple Green Electric on uh, Google and they are a company with uh, charging points in both the United States and the United Kingdom and they are indeed 350 kilowatt chargers. Unfortunately, it, although they've got a map of all of their chargers 
on their website, they don't have prices for the chargers, which is uh, a bit a uh, bit of a shame. Um, I was kind of uh, hoping to get some uh, interesting uh, information about that. Well, now we're in England. Let's have a look, see how many spare stalls there are at uh, T-Bay Services. I do that. Seven stalls left. That's uh, perfectly uh, fine. There's a tractor doing a bit of snow ploughing on the superchargers. And here we are. So here at uh, uh, T-Bay Services, not much has changed in the, in the last year. There has been some talk about the northbound services uh, getting superchargers and but I'm going to have to say um, they said the same thing about Todd Hill southbound services and that just disappeared off the map. Now the question is going to be will uh, T-Bay northbound uh, get the superchargers that we really need and will there be any expansion of uh, any uh, electric vehicle charging on the uh, uh, southbound uh, T-Bay services? I don't know that question, the answer to that question but certainly there's no evidence to suggest that there's any uh, construction of uh, electric chargers uh, going on at uh, T-Bay southbound. So uh, next destination is going to be Hilton Park southbound. So now we're charged up onto T-Bay services. Uh, battery is predicted to be 15% when we get there. So just uh, for reference, we were predicted to be 20% when we got to T-Bay services, but we ended up with 24%. So my reckoning is that as we drive further south, we uh, will we'll actually get better battery performance. A lot of it is down to the fact that the, uh, that the battery's warmed up and also my reckoning is that the uh, is that the uh, heavier traffic will um, help to improve efficiency? So it's definitely a little bit slippery around uh, T Bay services. That's for certain. Now I've checked the Google uh, traffic and uh, it's a clear run until just north of Stafford and then there's some congestion uh, going on there. So um, one of the things that uh, I no longer have on my Tesla, I don't have the, uh, the traffic uh, illustrations. You have to pay £10 a month to get your Google traffic illustrations on this map and uh, I thought to myself, I'm not paying £10 a month to get that. So I don't use the, uh, the traffic feature all that often. And uh, I don't, I've never used the satellite map function either. And having internet connect connectivity uh, isn't a big deal uh, for me. You know, I, I use this car for, for driving. I don't use it for browsing the internet. Um, I don't see the point in spending money on uh, uh, on things which I already have on my phone. Well, here we are on the M6, uh, just north of uh, Lancaster, about five miles. We have got traffic and it looks like uh, there's probably been a collision uh, up ahead. Everyone is uh, stop start at the moment, so we'll just have to uh, get through this. No collisions were involved here, just two lanes being shut down as part of planned roadworks. In total, there are about four different sections where we suffered delays on the M6. So we are uh, just north of uh, Stoke-on-Trent on the M6. Uh, the efficiency of our drive is about uh, 300, uh, just over 300 watt hours per mile. So it's a lot better. Um, we've got uh, fairly heavy traffic, but it is uh, free flowing. Now, one thing I want to talk about is uh, the software updates. Um, 
the autopilot will override the uh, windscreen wiper settings. If I press the button here and try and turn the, the, the windscreen wipers to something which is, uh, oh, that works. Uh, what I find is that it forces the, um, the windscreen wipers to auto when you put the um, cruise control or, or autopilot on. As you can see, it's, it's rather dismal in terms of the, uh, the wiping interval. Um, but uh, I just discovered, yes, you can, you can set another speed if you want. Um, what I find is that when, we on a, when we're on a dry bit of road, you get lots of dirt which starts building up and then it starts to wipe. And then of course, the, the, the more obscured the uh, camera becomes, the harder it tries to wipe it. And it's just, it's just spreading uh, dirt all over the camera. And eventually it just bails out and uh, disconnects from the autopilot, which is uh, rather unsatisfactory. I think they need to uh, figure out how to uh, know when it's actually just simply spreading dirt across the, the camera. So here we are, um, Newcastle under Lyme in uh, heavy traffic. Now, one of the things we've got here are variable speed limits. Previously, the autopilot would not recognize the uh, speed limits on motorways. It always assumed 70 miles an hour. But the software update uh, now shows 40 miles an hour, which is consistent with the uh, signs on the overhead gantries. So I'm uh, a lot happier with that because it means I can just leave it in cruise control and be satisfied that the uh, cruise control will uh, adjust the speed automatically. Well, here I am, Hilton Park Services. Been here before and uh, because I've got somebody parked next to me, we're uh, charging up at half speed, which is a bit of a pain. But at the same time, yes, there are uh, spaces which are now free, but I just think to myself, can I really be bothered to uh, change my parking space for that? for the sake of that. Um, I'm not going to be charging up for that long. Um, another 25% and I'll be good to go. I've been here before and uh, nothing much has changed in this service station. Um, that there aren't any uh, hints of any new uh, electric chargers anywhere at all. Um, and I'm, I'm really hoping that in the near future we're going to see a lot more uh, chargers. Um, I'd like to see some more of uh, the other brands as well, such as GridServe. Um, they are expanding quite quickly, but the question is whether they're expanding quickly enough to deal with demand. Um, here, you could say by definition, I uh, drove up and I, I charged up uh, without having to queue. So I guess th there, is, uh, th there is sufficient supply at the moment, in theory. But it's been uh, quite a, a mucky uh, uh, drive down the M6, that's for sure. So lots of salt on the roads today. And what I find is that on every single uh, Model 3 that I can see in here, you get lots of muck just uh, uh, appearing on the trailing edge of the uh, passenger door. Um, and uh, if we open up here, again, in the sills, um, you just get muck uh, building up. They don't have, uh, th this, is an after, this is an aftermarket seal I put on, um, but as you can see, it doesn't really work. Can't, it doesn't really work. Uh, again, I need to, uh, we've got uh, a mucky uh, rear view camera, which is just a bit of a pest. One of the things I really could do with is, you know, a bucket full of nice, warm, clean, soapy water and a, and a squeegee and a microfiber cloth. And we can just clean our cars whilst we're waiting to charge up. That would just be uh, ideal. So another software update I find uh, quite interesting is the uh, energy graph. Um, it shows you your predicted uh, profile um, as well as your actual profile. Uh, and it tells you, uh, for example, how much of your electricity has been used, not just by driving, but also by climate and battery conditioning and uh, anything to do with uh, height or height gain or, or height loss. So this is, uh, this, this is quite uh, an interesting thing. And you can also have a look at park. So for example, if you're um, just sitting around uh, uh, in your car, for example, then it will uh, tell you how much of your battery is being used by uh, all these different functions here. So very, uh, very interesting. We're not too far away from uh, 
uh, getting charged up. Once it gets up to 15%, then, uh, then I'm good to uh, drive off. Right, we've charged up to 79%. It reckons we're gonna be getting back to our destination with 7% charge. And personally, I don't quite believe that number. Now, one of the things I wanna talk about is the price of electricity at the superchargers. So at the moment, it's 49 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, until very recently, it was 34 pence per kilowatt hour. And then uh, in September time, it was about 66 pence per kilowatt hour. So there's a peak time period from four o'clock in the evening until eight o'clock in the evening. I think it jacks up to uh, 60, uh, 6 pence per kilowatt hour or thereabouts. But in terms of super fast charging, uh, that's the cheapest price you'll get anywhere. It's cheaper than GridServe, which is about 67 pence per kilowatt hour. Cheaper than FastNed, uh, far cheaper than an Ionity last time I checked. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I don't think they're ripping you off at the superchargers. If you bear in mind the wholesale price of electricity, it was cheap uh, in, it was, sorry, I won't say the word cheap. It was cheaper in October time it was getting down to around uh, uh, 15, 20 pence per uh, kilowatt hour on a wholesale basis, but now it's much more expensive. It, it's about 50, per, uh, 50 pence per kilowatt hour um, on a wholesale basis, simply because there's a lack of wind and it's uh, persistent cold weather. So uh, we have got 158 miles of driving to go and we are going to go via the M5 and the M40 around Birmingham simply because the M42 uh, where the M6 uh, turns off onto the M42 um, that is uh, uh, badly congested. There were the usual obligatory traffic jams on the M5, M6 junction, and then it was a clear run all the way down to High Wycombe where we experienced even more traffic jams. At this point, I was getting rather sore. I really wanted to stretch my legs, and it's testament to the fact that this car will last on a charge far longer than I can last. Well, here we are, the M25, everyone's favorite road. I'd like to say it's only 20 minutes along here before the A3, but uh, who knows? I have no idea how long this is going to take, but it looks pretty dreadful. <laughs> yes, the M25 was up to its old tricks again. It was lovely and free-flowing around Heathrow Airport, but as you approach the M3, the Q caution signs come along, and inevitably you get about 20, 25 minutes worth of delays as the M3 joins the M25 and it was absolute agony for me and I was really very glad to get back to Guildford and where I could stand up and stretch my legs finally. Well here we are in Guildford and this is the uh, last of the high speed dual carriageways and uh, now it's just time to get some food in Tesco's and then onwards uh, to my final destination after that. Well, here we are, arriving in our final uh, village. What I have to say is that the auto headlights, the auto uh, brightness is uh, very good. It's much, much better than what it was when I first bought this car. Um, it will dip pretty much immediately as soon as it sees tail lights or oncoming headlights, but it does take a, a few seconds to go back to full beam again. So all told, Let's have a look at our trips. So since um, Hilton Park Services, we've done 256 watt hours per mile. So that really reflects the fact that we're in heavy traffic and uh, it's been a milder day. The uh, state of charge now is 18%, so it was predicted to be 7%. So it uh, grossly underestimated the uh, state of charge uh, in this particular instance. And I think it goes to show that uh, a lot of the predictions are based on uh, what it thinks the prevailing temperature is and how that extrapolates uh, to the final destination. Um, so it was very optimistic uh, when I first left my house, when it was minus five, but now it's very pessimistic. 
uh, but overall for the journey since uh, Aberdeenshire uh, we've uh, achieved 325 watt hours per mile so that's that's fair to middling I'd say I'd say that's a, a good um, mileage in temperatures of about minus two but it's uh, very poor on, on summer tyres in the middle of summer of course. Right, and here we are. So that's it for uh, this journey. It took 13 hours to do the 588 miles from Aberdeenshire to West Sussex. Quite a lot longer than my record time in the Tesla Model 3. Ten and a half hours is the fastest time. Uh, so uh, it's, it just demonstrates uh, that we're back to old tricks in terms of uh, pre-pandemic traffic levels now. So in my next video, I want to talk about uh, a review of how my solar panels have been doing for the whole of the second year of operation. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.